Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Dr. Cavanaugh is a retired physician, founder of a national organization called Health Watch USA. Good morning, Dr. K. Uh, good morning, Jack. Dr. K is so well prepared, he always does my homework for me. He sends me a lot of information that I can uh, bring up, and this first one really got my attention. Walgreens test positivity rate is up 100% in Kentucky in the last week. Tell us about that. Yes. Well, right now, Walgreens is giving out some of the most complete data you can get. And if you just Google Walgreens COVID-19 index, you can find it. They do a large number of tests in the nation. And they're right now reporting the results. It's accurate. It gives you a good cross-section of the nation. And the positivity rate in the United States is rising. And in Kentucky, according to Walgreens data, it's over 10%. And so, as I said before, I think we're going to be seeing an uptick with this Omicron BA2 variant. Whether or not we're going to have a large surge, don't know. Uh, one of the things in Kentucky which may help us is we did so terribly bad during the actual Omicron surge, the BA1, that that may give us some protection for this BA2 surge. So that's maybe a silver lining in a very bad performance that we had with the previous surge. We've heard a lot about getting a fourth dosage or a second booster as far as the Pfizer vaccine is concerned, not too effective, huh? Well, it depends. If you're over the age of 60, you will get some benefit. Now, as you know, I came out here to Arizona and about 10 days before I started coming out, right when it got approved, I received my second booster, which would be the fourth dosage. And in people who are over the age of 60, your immunity does wane faster than other age groups, and the booster tends to restore it back to normal. Now, as far as getting infections, probably isn't going to prevent that much after about six weeks. It goes back to the way it was before, but prevention of hospitalizations doesn't appear to be waning, and that, I think, is really significant, and that would be at the six-week period for hospitalizations. Th to me, that's very encouraging. Now, I should note that this kind of goes along with the idea that antibodies can fall off, but you still may have some memory B cells around that can kick up and prevent severe disease. And I think that's probably what's happening here. Interesting. Post-vax evidence of myocarditis with COVID vaccine, similar to other vaccines? That's correct. Overall, it's similar to other vaccines. Myocarditis, as you know, is a very hotly debated issue in the media. There's still one age group that is young young males that I think probably have a higher incidence of myocarditis, 450 per million vaccination doses. So there's 450 people will get it out of 1 million doses given. That's still a little bit high. Your chances are maybe one out of a couple of thousand. But most of those cases, the vast majority of them are mild and certainly much, much less likely to get myocarditis with the vaccine than you are with getting COVID. And with these types of new strains, your chances of getting infected with COVID are really, really frequent, common to occur, especially if you're doing things like going to school and intermingling with people who aren't necessarily wearing masks. So I myself would recommend getting vaccinated unless you've had a problem with the vaccine or some reason why you can't. If that's the case, you've got another option and that's getting the monoclonal antibody product, Evusheld, and that's something that you can also consider doing, which will give you prophylaxis and tend to also prevent infections and severe disease. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Jack.